I just wasted five seconds of your time, sue me. <laughs> okay, well that would be a pretty dumb reason to sue me, but that would be about a hundred times smarter than the things these people sued over. Make sure you're sitting down, they get pretty dumb. Here are the 10 dumbest things people sued over. Number 10 are missing pants. Found them. On May 3rd, 2005, 54-year-old administrative law judge Roy Pearson Jr. dropped off a pair of gray dress pants at Custom Cleaners, a Washington DC dry cleaning business. Due to an error that involved the pants being sent to another dry cleaners, they were offered back to the judge two days later. However, Pearson claimed the pants weren't his. The receipts and tags all matched up and the pants looked correct, but that wouldn't convince Pearson and he wound up suing the company for <clears throat> $65 million? The case was well documented in the media, especially after a recess was needed when the plaintiff broke down in tears over the psychological torment of not having his special pants with him. But th those slacks were mad. <laughs> Shocker, Custom Cleaners won the case, but Pearson still, to this day, says the pants that they tried to give him aren't his. Hey Pearson, you're kinda missing the point you're a little bit nuts. Don't sue regular people who actually had your pants. You're losing your mind. Go to a mental hospital. Okay, moving on. Number nine is beer in real life. Beer commercials are usually super upbeat, targeting men and often showing male beer drinkers surrounded by good looking people and having the time of their lives. Of course, every sip of beer doesn't really come with an instant good time, except that that's something that apparently came as a bit of a revelation to Richard Overton, who on June 6, 1991, decided to stop the flow of lies by filing a lawsuit. Well, I had a sip of this beer here and there was not ladies all around me. Lawsuit. Acting as his own attorney, shocker, Overton sued Anheuser-Busch, the company behind Budweiser and Bud Light, for $10,000, citing emotional stress was caused when beer drinkers realized that they'd been lied to. He also said the lie had caused him physical distress, as well as financial losses. The case was dismissed, although Overton continues to claim that he and all beer drinkers are being deceived. I don't know what planet this guy's on, but I want to live on. It, crack open a beer, party, party, party. <laughs> Number eight is Pepsi points. On March 28, 1996, a loyalty program was launched by PepsiCo that allowed consumers to collect points off their products and trade them in for premiums, such as t-shirts, leather jackets, and glasses. To advertise Pepsi points, a commercial was aired that humorously claimed that a Harrier fighter jet could be purchased for 7 million points. You already know where this is going. Now clearly for the rest of us, it was a gag, but that didn't stop 21-year-old business student John Leonard from actually trying to get one. Along with the 15 points that he had collected, Leonard mailed a check for $708.50 for the remaining points that he needed and waited calmly for his jet, which never came. How sad. So he sued PepsiCo demanding that they deliver his plane that he felt he rightly deserved. The judge sided with the soft drink company, but many still believe Leonard was in the right. For those people, let me ask you a question. Would you really want a fighter jet in this guy's hands? Uh-huh. Yeah, think about it. He's a little bit loopy. Number seven is too scary. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Florida is, obviously, designed to terrify the pants off people with gory scenes and actors in costumes that make a lot of noise, so they usually only draw visitors that actually want to be scared. Kinda makes sense. Well, apparently 57-year-old Cleanthe Peters and her 10-year-old granddaughter visited for another reason altogether because they got the fright of their lives courtesy of a chainsaw-wielding actor and they were so traumatized that they soon the park. Hey honey, you wanna go to a theme park? I'm sure nothing scary is going on tonight. <laughs> Peters alleges that while two of them were exiting a ride, the actor ran out of the dark and chased them with a loud, albeit chainless, tool, causing them to fall to the ground and become petrified. She sued them for $15,000, claiming she suffered psychological trauma. And guess what? The case was thrown out. I don't know what's more stupid here, going to a place that's called Halloween Horror Nights and expecting 
expecting Christmas or bringing your 10 year old granddaughter. Just <laughs> Number six is fake Jordan. Many people take looking like a famous celebrity to be a compliment. In fact, some have even made a decent career out of impersonating them. Well, such was not the case with 51-year-old Alan Heckard, who allegedly was constantly mistaken for legendary basketball player and Nike spokesperson Michael Jordan. No, that wasn't me in Space Jam. Get away! In a move that baffled many, Heckard sued both Jordan and Nike for $416 million each, pulling the number seemingly out of nowhere and citing defamation, emotional pain and suffering, and permanent injury as the reasoning. According to the plaintiff, Michael Jordan stole his likeness, and the shoe company was responsible for making the NBA star a household name, exponentially increasing the trauma. Soon after and without explanation, Hecker dropped the case. Well, that's for one of two reasons. Either A, he realized, I can't go up against a billion dollar company like Nike, da, 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 or he just found his mind again, because clearly he lost it. Number five is personal injuries. After attempting to take his own life by leaping in front of a subway train on March 7th, 1977, 26-year-old Milo Stevens Jr. was left without a leg, an arm, and a part of his other arm. But instead of taking the fact that he survived the attempt as a positive, the Manhattan resident decided to file a lawsuit against the New York Transit Authority. Oh, sit down for this one. He claimed that the operator of the train was negligent and failed to even attempt to slow down the car until it was too late. Well, despite the fact that the suicidal man deliberately put himself in harm's way, the transit authority couldn't risk standing behind the train operator and believe it or not, quickly settled with Stevens for $650,000. That just makes me want to puke. But just five years later, Milo had a second failed suicide attempt, once again throwing himself off a subway platform. Luckily for New York, this time there were no major injuries. Yep, this guy got money. That's exactly what you want. Money in the hands of crazy people. Let's see where that goes. Number four is Apple addiction. On June 19th, 2013, 36-year-old Chris Sevier, an attorney in Nashville, Tennessee, filed a lawsuit against Apple, the colossal technology company, for $75,000, which sounds kind of reasonable compared to the other ones. In the suit, Sevier cited that their services had corrupted his relationship with his wife through, of all things, giving him access to pornography. Apparently, he tried to visit Facebook.com, but accidentally replaced the word face with a much more vulgar other word, which led to an insatiable addiction of seeing naked girls, which ended his marriage. His complaint even goes so far as to claim his desire for his wife was reduced as he realized she wasn't 21 anymore. Sevier says that Apple should have a pornographic filter already activated on their devices before consumers buy them so situations like this can't happen. No, Apple, please don't do that. It, uh, uh, I mean, it because that would be censorship and Censorship is bad. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I care. <clears throat> Censorship. Number three is the real jackass. In 1997, 38-year-old electrical lineman Bob Kraft legally changed his name to Jack Ass in an attempt to honor his brother and bring attention to a cartoon character he created. What is wrong with these people? Like, I... Ugh. The Hot Springs, Montana native spent a few years allegedly bringing honor to the name before, in 2000, MTV began airing the show Jackass. It was a crude comedy showcasing gross pranks and stunts. Well, in November of 2003, Mr. Ass filed a lawsuit against Viacom, the media company behind MTV, claiming his wonderful name had been defamed and his reputation tarnished through plagiarizing. Yeah, with a name like that, so much honor or how could they defile it? The fact that his ridiculous name was used as a title for such a raunchy show made Jack feel that he deserved, um, $10 million in damages from the corporation. Ah, but sadly for Jack Ass, his case was tossed out. Man, this guy's a fool. What a donkey. <laughs> See what I did, Jack Ass. Moving on. Number two is man versus himself. 
People file frivolous lawsuits all the time targeting major corporations, celebrities, or even their own family members. But it takes something truly special inside someone for them to target themselves. Well, that's just what Robert Lee Brock, an inmate at the Indian Creek Correctional Center in Chesapeake, Virginia did in March of 1995 when he filed a lawsuit against himself for five million buckaroos. According to Brock, he'd violated his own civil rights and religious beliefs on July 1st, 1993, when he got drunk and was soon after arrested for grand larceny and breaking and entering. Because he was in jail for the next 23 years, Brock couldn't earn money to pay himself the five million dollars. So he felt the state should pay for it. And he won! No, I'm just kidding. The case was dismissed because this guy's a nut job. But the judge did point out that the plan was ingenious. I wouldn't choose to use that word, but hey, to each their own. And number one is man versus God. Yeah, that's someone you want to go up against, the big man, okay. Many people believe in and want to serve God, but in this particular case, one man was more interested in serving him court papers. Yeah, great idea, go up against an omnipotent deity. I'm sure it'll turn out great. On September 14th, 2007, 70 year old Ernie Chambers, a serving state senator in Omaha, Nebraska, filed a lawsuit against God himself, citing the big guy upstairs had either caused or indirectly caused various disasters specifically pointing to floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and deadly plagues. The lawsuit included a cease and desist order stating that God needed to cease harmful activities and the making of terroristic threats. Chambers claims he didn't file the suit because he has a problem with the deity, but because he wants to fight off any laws that prevent others from filing frivolous lawsuits. Ultimately, the case was tossed due to God not having a fixed address. So that was the 10 dumbest things people sued over. I just lost some more faith in humanity. But if you enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I made you laugh. Don't sue me. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Bye,